Julius Robert Oppenheimer was born April 22, 1904 in New York City. Starting around age 7, he became fascinated with crystals. By the time he was 12, he was using the family typewriter to correspond with local geologists. The geologists didn't realize they were conversing with a 12-year-old boy and invited him to speak at the New York Mineralogy Club. At age 18, he entered Harvard College, majoring in chemistry and taking a heavier course load than most, with six courses per term instead of the usual four. After three years, Oppenheimer graduated from Harvard with a Bachelor of Arts summa cum laude. He continued his education at Cambridge, but struggled with the lab work. He wrote to a friend, quote, I am having a pretty bad time. The lab work is a terrible bore, and I am so bad at it that it is impossible to feel that I am learning anything. Oppenheimer would develop a contentious relationship with his tutor, Patrick Blackett, and did try to poison him. Christopher Nolan's movie shows that Neil's boar almost eats the poisoned apple. This was added to the movie for dramatic effect, and didn't really happen. It was Ernest Rutherford who introduced Oppenheimer to Bohr. Throughout his life, Oppenheimer was plagued by periods of depression, even telling his brother, quote, I need physics more than friends. After leaving Harvard, Robert began to study the classical Hindu texts, although he never became a Hindu in the traditional sense. In 1926, he left Cambridge for the University of Göttingen. Here he developed a reputation for being too enthusiastic during discussions and would almost take over the classes. One of his peers had a petition signed by others threatening to boycott the class if the instructor didn't tell Oppenheimer to quiet down. The instructor left the petition out where Oppenheimer would read it, and it ended up serving its purpose. He calmed down. In March of 1927, he obtained his Doctor of Philosophy degree and soon moved back to the States after being awarded the United States National Research Council Fellowship at the California Institute of Technology. Like many young intellectuals of the 1930s, Oppenheimer supported social reform that would later be categorized as communist ideas. In 1936, he became involved with Jean Tatlock. She wrote for the Western Worker, a Communist Party newspaper. The two broke up in 1939. Later that year, Oppenheimer met Catherine Puning. She had previously been married a couple of times and even had a common-law marriage. Robert and Catherine actually started seeing each other while Catherine was still married to Richard Harrison, a physician and medical researcher. Eventually, she asked for a divorce from Harrison and would marry Oppenheimer in 1940. By 1942, when Oppenheimer joined the Manhattan Project, the FBI had already been tracking his movements in regards to socialist slash communist groups. Around this time, Oppenheimer would rekindle his affair with Tatlock, even taking trips to see her in California. Tatlock would end up committing suicide on January 4, 1944. World War II was coming to a close. Germany would surrender on May 7, 1945, and the first nuclear test would take place just two months later. Oppenheimer had given the site near Alamogordo, New Mexico, the codename Trinity, which came from one of John Donne's holy sonnets. He had been introduced to Donne's work by Tatlock. The world's first nuclear explosion took place on that site on July 16, 1945. The United States would drop Little Boy, a uranium gun-type bomb, on Hiroshima on August 6, 1945. It would then drop Fat Man, an implosion-type nuclear weapon with a solid plutonium core, on Nagasaki, on August 9th, 1945, Oppenheimer did express regret over his involvement in developing nuclear weapons. He expressed these feelings to President Harry S. Truman. In Nolan's movie, as Oppenheimer leaves the Oval Office, he overhears Truman say he doesn't want to see him again and calls him a crybaby. This isn't exactly how it went down. There is a claim that the president did tell the Under Secretary of State, quote, I don't want to see that son of a bitch in this office ever again. And then later on in a letter, Truman would call Oppenheimer a crybaby scientist. After the war, Oppenheimer used his position to argue for more control of nuclear weapons and against the development of the hydrogen bomb. Businessman Louis Strauss did not agree with Oppenheimer's views, so he held a hearing to investigate Oppenheimer's loyalty. With the help of the FBI, who had been tracking Oppenheimer's movements for decades, the Atomic Energy Commission argued that Oppenheimer's association with communists made him a security threat. In 1954, his security clearance was revoked, making him one of many people to be blacklisted during that era. He spent the remaining years of his life giving lectures and arguing against political influence in science. Oppenheimer helped form what would become the World Academy of Art and Science, an international, non-governmental scientific organization. 
Throughout his adult life, Oppenheimer was a chain smoker and was diagnosed with throat cancer in late 1965. In 1966, after inconclusive surgery, he underwent unsuccessful radiation treatment and chemotherapy. On February 15, 1965, Julius Robert Oppenheimer would slip into a coma and pass away at his home in Princeton, New Jersey. In December 2022, the U.S. Department of Energy would vacate the decision to revoke Oppenheimer's security clearance and officially acknowledged that his hearing had been unfair.